You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. And today on our second edition of Cabral House Call for the weekend, I'm taking your questions that we've gathered throughout the week. We have some really great ones this week, covering everything from exercise to wellness-based issues and even a weight loss. So it looks like we've covered the entire week. You know, my practice, I talk about three main things. I talk about weight loss, I talk about wellness, and I talk about essentially living longer. And you know, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you can eliminate the big five with heart disease and high blood pressure and cancer and Alzheimer's, all those big things by living a good, healthy lifestyle, by working on it now, right? Rather than when you do get it, you can literally save yourself, I would say, 10 years of really not only suffering from chronic-based diseases, living with better quality of life, of course, but just a longer lifespan. We have to look at the main things that affect people's lives at an earlier age. Try to work on them now. Try to take care of them now if we can. So let's get right into the questions. And I'm going to be talking about these kind of throughout the episode. So I'm excited, looking forward to these great questions today. So Karina is up first. Karina is asking, I've been diagnosed with PCOS. How can I treat this naturally? Okay. So I have to say that it probably, I would say once a week, maybe it's a little bit more than that, but at least once a week, I see someone in my practice who has PCOS. And PCOS stands for polycystic ovary syndrome. And basically, what we're looking at for the causes or the how PCOS comes about, so I'm just going to keep referring to polycystic ovary syndrome as PCOS, is that in women, there's an issue with PCOS developing from dysregulation of blood sugar, meaning like not being able to effectively control blood sugar and insulin. Also, a greater amount of low-grade inflammation that's literally just kind of hanging out the body from a systemic base level that also allows for more production of androgens. We're going to talk about extra testosterone production that shouldn't be there. And also, here's some other complications that not a lot of people are really talking about, but you're going to be more prone to PCOS if you have type 2 diabetes. Again, that's that blood sugar issue. High blood pressure because of the, the sympathetic nervous system tone, that fight or flight, which I'm going to talk about in a second as well. And cholesterol-based issues. Again, it shows inflammation. Remember, type 2 diabetes, symptom. High blood pressure, symptom. High cholesterol, symptom of all different issues. Type 2 diabetes is a symptom of not being able to control blood sugar. Okay, that's what the disease turns into. High blood pressure, I talked about this in last Tuesday's episode. I believe it was episode 108. High blood pressure is a symptom. It means that you have something off in your sympathetic nervous system. You have a mineral imbalance. You have a heavy metal toxicity. There's something going on causing high blood pressure. It doesn't happen out of the blue. There's always a reason why. High cholesterol, it can be an inflammation issue. It can be a stress-based issue. It can be a lot of other different issues. But again, cholesterol, that high increased, whether genetic or not, is still a symptom of something else that's wrong. Even if it's genetic, it's still tied to an inflammatory-based issue, whether it's an APOE type issue, meaning like if you're a a 4-4 or a 3-4. Again, if you have your genetics checked, you can find this out. If you have a high-fat diet, well, you're going to have high cholesterol. Now, everyone else, it may not be from fats in your diet, but it can certainly be from inflammation from processed foods, from stress, from other things like that as well. So I'm not going to turn this into a you know cure everything episode, but I do want you to know that Lack of sleep can cause PCOS, meaning like, again, more stress, depression, anxiety. Uh, again, more stress we're talking about, right? So let's get into PCOS. This isn't going to be a PCOS episode, but I just want to give Karina some help and hope of how we work on it in my practice. Again, I don't treat disease in my practice because most diseases are symptoms. They're not the actual underlying root cause of what's going on in your body. So if it's a symptom, why would I treat a symptom? Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work on the things that can help rebalance the body. So so when I see someone with PCOS, I'm immediately running a adrenal um, stress test with hormones. And I'm going to look at cortisol levels. I'm going to look at 
a level. So cortisol just means your energy production throughout the day of a, a stress hormone called cortisol. And if cortisol is very high, well, I know that there's going to be increased levels of inflammation, there's going to be increased levels of stress in the body that can decrease progesterone, increase estrogen, which we don't want, right? And it can also sometimes leave testosterone a bit imbalanced as well, like maybe a little bit too high um, for a female with PCOS as well. And that higher levels of cortisol can increase blood sugar levels as well, because when you put your body in this fight or flight based syndrome, well, the body needs a fast fuel source and fat is not fast fuel source. It's a slow oxidizing fuel source. It needs an immediate fuel source, which is sugar. And so your body will create a process called gluconeogenesis, or it will pull sugar out somehow in your body to be able to use for fuel. So let's not get too technical, but Karina, what I would do is this, run that hormone panel like I was talking about, or work with a functional-based medicine doctor who knows how to work with this, or a naturopathic doctor, or again, doesn't always have to be a doctor. Maybe you just find a really smart nutritionist or someone that knows how to do this, or work with us. We'd be happy to work with you, of course. The other thing is, simply go on a detox or start to control your diet by elimination based diet if you can't afford any of the first options. I understand that. There's an option for everyone. My goal for you is to first regulate your blood sugar levels. Okay, we need to bring that back down, remove those processed carbohydrates. We need to work on sleep. We need to work on calming your stress response, work on that from a lifestyle-based perspective as well, and then we can take it from there. All right, but Karina, I do have to tell you that there is hope and you can absolutely work on this naturally. We do it all the time. All right, Francine E. Francine is up next. What's your recommendation on snacking between meals? Okay, great question. And as you might know too, my practice is all about bio-individuality. So I'm a naturopathic doctor by education, but I studied Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, I mean, functional medicine, you name it. I look at everything. And the reason is I don't want to try to stick someone in a certain box that I can only practice from. So instead of there being ego in medicine, which I'm not a big fan of, I'd rather take the ego out and just say, whoever has the best solution for this person, let's use that. All right. And so that is where essentially I customize things. Now, for someone who's a fast oxidizer, meaning they break down food very quickly, I might allow for some snack in between meals, meaning like three meals, and then two, and then a snack between in mid morning, a snack for mid afternoon. But if someone's a slow oxidizer, and you can easily find this out with a hair tissue mineral analysis, it's a very inexpensive test. We have them at our store online, or I mean, you could probably do a hair tissue mineral analysis with another functional medicine based doctor or naturopath as well. And what you're going to do is you're just going to look at stress levels and whether you're fast or slow oxidizer. Meaning, like if you're someone who's under a lot of stress and the blood's not in your stomach, and the food takes longer to digest, well, just from a common sense perspective, you wouldn't want to snack between meals because the first meal isn't fully out of your stomach. And for a lot of people, that could be anywhere from four to five to six hours. And so it just makes sense to only do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But if you're someone where the food moves through your stomach quickly and you start to get a dip in low blood sugar, well, you might need to snack between meals. That might be best for you to maintain energy levels. And just from uh, just my own personal story as well, is that I needed to literally eat two every two hours when I was trying to regulate my adrenal glands and my, my blood sugar and all of those things. But now I don't anymore. So it wasn't a forever diet. I just had to eat every few hours to keep myself stable so that I wasn't crashing. And then eventually I moved down to where I am now, which is about four uh, meals per day, or I guess three main meals, you could say. And then I do an afternoon snack because my lunch to dinner is about six and a half hours to seven hours apart. And so after three and a half, four hours after my lunch, that's when I have my afternoon snack. And you know what? A lot of people in my practice, that's the same meal plan that they get. But then again, like I said, some people need to eat every few hours. And it also depends, you know, if you're just having something light for breakfast, well, that's not going to take that long to digest. But if you're having, if you're someone who has like eggs and in a big breakfast, you don't really need a mid mid morning snack. I doubt all of that heavy protein is going to be digested by the time you do get to lunch. So general rule, keep your meals and snacks, keep your feeding we'll put it that way, at least three to four hours apart, okay? And then if it's after four hours, you can kind of decide if there needs to be a little snack in there or not, okay? Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Certainly I can get more in depth on this in the future if you would like. Or again, you could run a hair tissue mineral analysis. You could find out if you're a slow or fast oxidizer. Okay, Sam B is up next. Sam B is asking, I'm a personal trainer and I'm looking to expand my knowledge. What should I study next after 
mastering the exercise component for my clients? Okay, great question. Personal trainers will always hold a big place in my heart and for people that I love to teach. And the reason is I grew up, like I literally from age, I don't know, 16, 17 years old, lived in health clubs. Like it was kind of my my safe space, my place that I would be that I just felt uh, really alive and really great. Even when I was coming back from uh, debilitating dis-ease, we'll call it at 17, I know I eased my way back in the health club. It made me feel good. You know, after every workout, I couldn't do much, but I still felt good that I was doing something for my body. It was kind of like at a point where I felt like I had no control being in the gym, being able to exercise and do something for myself and then just reading about nutritional supplements and eating well. I, I just felt like it was how I could control what I could control. I didn't know that much back then. I didn't know really what I should be doing to get my body well again, but I, I was doing something and that made me feel good about myself and it kind of gave me hope. So anyway, a little tangent there, but for Sam, I, I love Sam's question and the reason is he's coming from a perspective of client first. How can I become better for myself so that I can use that knowledge to then help my clients? And that's the perspective you have to have. That's what got me into this in the first place is, you know, I had to figure out this knowledge to help myself. But then after that, you know, why keep going? I figured it out for myself. Well, it's because I really believe that we are here for one thing and, and one thing only, and that is to help all of each other out in this world. Because you'll find that some of your like happiest moments are really helping others. Like you just, you get a lot of personal satisfaction as well. I love doing this podcast. I love teaching, love writing articles. And and that's just because I feel like I'm getting to share something. And if I keep it to myself, well, it's almost like I'm holding back. Like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So love the question. And so Sam, what I would say is this, once you master the exercise part of it, like how can you help all sorts of different populations, everyone from kids to then college athletes and professional athletes and your everyday person and seniors and, you know, every single person right under the sun. Okay. So learn how to work with everyone from an exercise perspective, keep it safe, keep them getting results. And then after that, what you really need to look to next after that is nutrition. How can you customize each person to get a little bit better nutrition? Now, again, you don't have to make it up. You can, you can take a nutrition course. You can just study other people's nutrition. Of course, that's what you should do to then be able to then effectively give all of those different populations the specific nutrition plan for them so that not everyone gets the same nutrition plan, right? Someone who's trying to lose weight doesn't get the nutrition plan of someone trying to gain weight, okay? So that's how we can look at it specifically after you master what the nutrition plans are, then look into things like digestive support, like digestive wellness. How do we get people to digest better? How do we work on things like constipation? And then the whole GI tract. And then after that, you can look into specific wellness-based things. And that's what all the personal trainers in my practice do. And we have over a dozen personal trainers here and every single one of them, absolutely fantastic. They come in with their own specialties. All of them obviously exercise and they kind of expand from there. I literally get to work on them because I work with the wellness-based clients and then whether they're working with a personal trainer or not, I get to work on all the different things with them and they get to see how I'm working from a wellness perspective and they gain more knowledge from that. So first exercise, then nutrition, and then how the digestive system works, right? Because that's obviously super important. And then after that, get into all the different nuances of wellness. And, and I think that's the best place to be. Sam, great question. Thank you everyone this week for all of your questions. Look forward again, doing this again next week on the Cabral Concept. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the Equalife difference is that you're not 
left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests, or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.